Hello. In this video, we will continue the discussion of using traditional pattern making techniques for creating sleeve patterns for your sloper. The techniques suggested here are adopted from the following two books. There are a lot of different types of sleeve. Using traditional pattern making methods, they all will come from your sleeve sloper, which we will be creating here. This video follows the same format as the previous one. We are going to use an existing sloper example to create a sloper cut and sewn for a specific character. Then we're going to scale the image to use as a guide. Afterwards, we'll use the avatar tool to capture volume. The important thing to remember is that the length of the armhole needs to equal the length of your sleeve cap. For your sloper, you want to get that as perfect as you can. I know I've said this before, but don't just trace the sloper example. I've tried it and it produces problems down the way when you try to use it. Instead, use it as a guide, letting the volume of your figure dictate the final shape. Your goal here is to fit the cap of the sleeve into the armhole of the bodice. You want to make sure both the shirt bodice and the sleeve fit flat against your figure with no strain. And mark my words, easier said than done. So let's jump into Marvelous Designer. This is continuing on from the basic sloper we started creating in the previous video. First thing we're going to do is we're going to check our strain map. And you want to do this regularly. And around the arm, it's not unusual to see a little bit of strain, but you don't definitely don't want a lot. Now we're going to add in our reference video. I'm hitting F4 to turn off the grid lines and I am going to add a background image. And I'm going to set the opacity so it's easy to see. The other thing I'm going to go into is display 2D pattern rendering style opaque. And now what we need to do is scale this image so that it approximates the scale of the model. To do that, we're going to start with a basic circumference measure tool and we're going to capture the length of his bicep. So that's going to be 14.5. So I'm going to create a rectangle pattern. I hit the keyboard S and this is going to be 14.5 one inch high. What I want to make sure is that this background image roughly matches the scale of my model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my background image and I'm going to change the scale to 110 and see how we're doing. So we're going to try to get it to match. And uh, actually, that's, that looks perfect. Now we're going to show our arrangement points. And I'm going to place it by his arm. Then I'm going to go into the sewing tool, undock it, and go into my segment tool and sew those two pieces together. All right, so now what we have is a point of reference for us to draw out the volume. So I'm going to drag this piece up so that it's as close to under his arm as I can get it. Also, what I'm checking here really quick, Q for the selection tool, double check your skin offset. And now what we're going to do is between this existing pattern and this new guide that we created, we're going to start drawing out the volume. So we're going to use the line avatar tool. And I'm just going to start drawing on the avatar. And I'm going to do this in four pieces. The more curves you have, the more pieces you want to use to capture the volume. Now doing this underneath is always very tricky and it's not going to produce the best results but it's just being used as a guide. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm going to save my project because we're going to flatten these pieces. And remember, this flatten tool can be a little buggy. I've had Marvelous Designer crash when using it, so always do a save before you attempt to use it. So we're going to capture these. It is a little tricky getting the blue box to flatten. Okay, so we have a mess here. I hit the B key to show my seams where Marvelous Designer is showing me how it combined the pattern pieces. And then we'll do this one. So that's the front, and now we're going to do the back. Also I'm holding down the shift key to flatten multiple pieces and then hitting the enter key to flatten them. And again a mess. Now we have an interesting situation here where Marvelous Designer because it was flattening on this plane, it flattened the pieces on the same plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and mirror paste so that I can get the opposite. And now, finally, what you're beginning to see is I'm going to delete these. And now what you're beginning to see is where this shape comes from. So you can see the sleeve shape. And this is why, as you can see, I don't have anywhere near as much volume as the sample. So what I need to do is create a pattern piece that follows the guide but captures the volume. So now I'm hitting the Z key. What I'm going to do now is select a line. I'm going to select a line and split into a uniform split. So that point I created on my pattern, rectangular pattern piece, I'm going to attempt to match the highest point of my flattened pieces. And then I'm going to split them equally again. So those new points that I created, I'm going to match them out to the volume. So I'm going to match this over here. And now you don't want to add any more points. From this point forward, what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the curve. So I'm hitting the C to start building out my curve here. I'm hitting the C key to start building out my curve. So let me move that away, and what you're beginning to see is we're getting something that looks more like this. So what I might do is move some of these points around so that they match the curve more. You want to continue to use your Bezier curve handles to draw out the curve. But again, what you're doing is you're using your guide and then matching it up against the volume that you created. And it's not going to be perfect, but I think this is enough to give us a first look at where we're at. So now what we're going to do is match the length of what we're doing. What I'm doing is I am hitting the A key. When I select multiple segments, I'll get a 2D line length over here in the property editors. So I'm I am shooting for 17.5 and currently these two pieces together are at 17.5. Not bad, not bad at all. So now we're going to actually sew them together and see what happens. So for now, what I want to do is just move these out of the way. 
and I'm going to freeze them so that they don't bother me. And now what I'm going to do is fit this sleeve back to the pattern arrangement point, move it up a little, and I'm going to move this, this guide out of the way. And now we're going to go into free sewing. And free sewing, then what we're going to do is we're going to start at the back here. And then we're going to sew it onto the bodice. So notice in the window on the right, I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go from the back to the right. And if you notice here, there's a very small point. That shows you where the line ends. This is actually good. There always should be a little extra give in your sleeve when fitting it into the arm hole. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a symmetric pattern with sewing and then simulate to pull the pieces together. Okay. Now here's that pinch point. Right now I'm not going to worry about that. It actually looks pretty good and I think even on our first try we got a decent sleeve cap that we can work with. I'm just going to do a few other things. I'm, I'm going to tug this. This blue dot shows you where it is. It's not unusual for there to be, notice where that where it's meeting the seam here. It's not unusual for there to be more volume on the back than on the front of the sleeve. Now we're going to do our strain map. And it's not unusual to have some red underneath, but overall we're in good shape with this sloper. Let's finish up the sleeves sloper now. What I'm going to do is delete these pattern pieces that we use to capture the volume. Now since we actually have the actual pattern piece. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to finish up the sleeves. What I'm going to do is move this line down. I'm holding down the shift key to move it in a straight line. When you move lines, you want to do them in small increments. You don't want to do it all at once because you might get problems fitting on the model. So I'm hitting spacebar to simulate, then I can finish up the rest of it. And I'm going to hit space. See, this is what I was talking about if you're not careful. So what you can do is you can pull that out of the model. It takes a while. And now we're going to do one last thing. We're going to use the basic circumference tool again to get a measurement of his wrist which is 7.5 so I'm going to change it to 8. I'm going to hit the Z key for edit pattern select this line select the sleeve ending line change the length I'm going to click right on the line and change the length to 8 and what I want to do is change the length on both sides so that it's even and simulate one last time. So now let's check our friend the strain map. And if you notice here, I really probably cut this line too short. I'm going to change the length 9.5. So that finishes our sleeve sloper. In the next video, I will begin to show you how to manipulate this sloper to create complex patterns for your characters.